eight things nice guys get wrong and what to do about it. Hi guys, Jeremy here, your Mindset Mastery Guy, and I am giving you tools, tips, strategies every single week on how to improve relationships, communication, parenting, the gauntlet of life. So make sure you subscribe, turn on the bell for notifications so that you're getting updates every single week. Hey guys, so first let's start with what is a nice guy? A nice guy is a guy who he thinks, I'm such a great guy and I do such good stuff. I deserve to be loved. I deserve to be worshiped. Why don't the girls like me? What's wrong? What's going on? And if he's not careful, that stuff can turn very negative and very hostile. So we're gonna break down the eight things that this type of mindset is doing and why it's a problem. So the first thing is, nice guys are naturally more feminine and not necessarily in a bad way, but they're just extra sensitive, extra in their head, a lot of times overthinking things. So if you wanna date a feminine partner and you're not running in your masculine polarity, that's gonna cause a problem. It's gonna cause an energetic mismatch and there's not gonna be an attraction, there's gonna be a repelling of each other. Number two is because of that being more feminine, they don't naturally lead in the relationship, which is gonna make women, feminine partners, they're gonna be repelled, they're gonna be fatigued, they're gonna be tired because they always have to keep taking the lead, they have to keep making decisions. They're not gonna melt into another partner that they have to keep supporting and lifting back up again. Number three, nice guys just don't have an attractive energy. Like when they're going on a date, if they take the initiative to plan a date, they're constantly doing a barometer check. Is, is this okay? Do you like this? Is this good for you? Are you comfortable? Do you want this? Do you like this? Do you? And it's this constant like, like, like you're a nervous chihuahua who is just like constantly, everything's okay, right? It's good, right? You like it, right? You like me, right? Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And that's just completely repellent energy. Confidence, my dude. Confidence is what you need. So relax and trust. Number four, nice guys have a pattern of putting their entire self into a relationship because that's what girls say they want. And it sounds good, but it becomes suffocating and smothering and they lose their identity because they're putting themselves into the relationship, their time, their money. They start to like whittle away friends. They don't go do stuff because, well, she wants to spend time together, so I'm not going to do the thing. And he starts to actually compress what he used to be interested in and what made him interesting to whoever he attracted, man or woman. It starts to become like you're just this low flame slowly flickering away. But the nice guy doesn't take ownership or responsibility of that. They put it on their partner. My partner wants me to blah, 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 when it's themselves that are taking their dials down. Five, because of this pattern of dialing themselves down, because they're in that feminine pattern, they have a pattern of what's called people pleasing and they want to be accommodating and adaptable and flexible. So they start to change their likes and dislikes, their wants and their needs to placate their partner, right? If you've seen the movie Runaway Bride, and the lady's been in all these different, you know, engagements and all the stuff. And it's like, well, how does she like her eggs? And they're interviewing all the guys. Every single guy, oh, she likes the eggs, dot, dot, dot. She always likes the eggs the way her partner does. By the end of the movie, she's like got this whole big thing of eggs of all different styles and, sty and types because I don't know. I'm going to try them all and see what I actually like because I don't know what I actually like. So it's really important if you want to be more in your masculine energy, you got to know what you like and where you stand and what your priorities are. Not be so wishy-washy, mealy-mouthed, accommodating, fawning, placating, falling all over the stage. Number six, nice guys are needy. They are constantly, not only are they checking on their partner and checking on their relationship, they're checking on themselves. Like, I'm cool, I look good, I'm, I'm solid. I, and it starts to become needy. It starts to become clingy. It's like, can't you be your own person? Why do you always have to need someone to approve you? It's freaking exhausting. And this also shows up especially in the bedroom because they give up their own needs and drives and they're trying so hard to please their partner. It's like their identity and their fulfillment is, well, I got to fill her up first for me to qualify and earn and deserve my own satisfaction. And in fact, truth be told, that was a pattern I used to run for a very long time. And as I got more clear in myself, everything changed in the bedroom as well. Number seven, this, the nice guy, he lacks conviction. He lacks like principles and guidelines and boundaries. So he doesn't have clear values. He doesn't have clear standards. He doesn't speak up. He doesn't have opinions. He doesn't have thoughts of his own. It's just kind of go along to get along. And usually this is stuff that came from childhood, domineering partner or domineering parents and unresolved patterns of, of you know, lack of fulfillment. So I got to be a certain way to earn the love of others. So I'm never going to admit to what I actually think, what I actually feel, or what I actually want. And that is not attractive to a feminine partner. 
they have to know, even if they don't like certain opinions of yours, they have to know you have the strength to speak your mind, speak your truth, and be who you really are. Because then they can trust you to tell them the truth and to genuinely show up for them. And then number eight is excessive apologizing. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm I'm sorry. I didn't realize, but I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, it's, I'm sorry. Like, I get on the people in my life around me. I'm like, stop apologizing. You have a right to exist. You have a right to your thoughts and your feelings and your opinions. You're not in my way. I'll say, excuse me. You don't need to keep saying apologize just for the fact you exist and you're taking up space. Stop that stuff. So overly apologizing for like breathing, breathing too loud, breathing too quiet, speaking too fast, speaking too slow. Knock it off. It's, it's completely repellent. And what I want to finish with, we could call this number nine really is the idea, you know, this whole red pill movement and men's movement in an unhealthy way. If anyone is trying to tell you or sell you on the idea of alpha males or beta males or sigma males or gamma males or whatever Greek term they want to use, yeah, that's all crap. It's all BS. It's an unproductive belief system, right? Even the original research where all the alpha stuff came from was on wolves in captivity. And the guy that did it has been trying to like get people to stop using his stuff because it was done out of context. When he studied wolves in nature, realized there is no alpha beta crap in an actual wolf pack. So we wanna put all that stuff aside. The truth is, within all of us, there is some ratio of masculine polarity, feminine polarity, and it's either in abundance or it's in scarcity. And it changes based on various circumstances, needs, desires, wants, values. That's all healthy expression. It's not, oh, pokey out part, only male, only masculine, hmm, pokey in part, only female, hmm. People are not that simplistic. We're not that deterministic. We are more complicated and it is amazing. And the more room we allow everyone to just be themselves, the more incredible life becomes for all of us. Hey guys, and if this clicks for you, if this makes sense, this is the type of stuff that I talk about in my Facebook group called The Unstoppable Mindset. And I'd love you to come join. You can get the link in the description down below and uh, make sure you hit the like and subscribe, turn on the bell for notifications, share this with a friend who you know is struggling in their relationship. And over here we have another video, go check it out because it's exactly why couples counseling most often doesn't work and what to do about it. And I got you covered.